How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much once again for checking out another video right here on the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a first year medical student right here in Ontario, Canada. And exactly one year ago today, I was getting ready for my own medical school interviews, specifically the MMI. So first of all, to everybody watching this video right now, congrats on your medical school interview. In the past, on this channel, I already made a longer style video, kind of breaking down all of the different aspects of the medical school interview process. And if you want to go and check that out, I'm going to link it up here. It's going to explain everything about the interview. But for today, what I thought that I'd do is kind of take the MMI format, condense it, and give you guys the highest yield information that you need to know before your own MMI interview. And one more thing guys, feel free to smash that like button just like always if you thought this is, that this video was helpful or if you are super excited to finally have a medical school interview. So first, a quick introduction to the MMI. MMI stands for multiple mini interviews and what they are is a series of smaller maybe 8 to 10 minute interviews that are done in succession so back to back to back. Uh, when you compare that to a regular style panel interview where it's just you and then the interviewers and it's kind of like an hour to maybe hour and a half conversation depending on where you're interviewing. Personally, I find the MMI style of interview is my favorite because each of the mini interviews are scored independently from the last one. So therefore, if you mess up on one particular station in the MMI and you recover from it in the next station and keep that going moving on, that one mess up that you did isn't really going to affect your performance for the rest of the interview. Whereas if you messed up on a panel style interview uh, and you said something that maybe you shouldn't have, those interviewers are going to be the only ones that are evaluating you for that entire interview. Now because these are different interviews, like there's little separate mini interviews, all of them are going to be scored separately. And thankfully, McMaster University goes and publishes a document where you could actually go and see the different question types, there's four that we're going to talk about today, um, that could possibly show up on your MMI, and then also how the interviewers are told to score the applicants. So I'm going to go ahead and link that document in the description below. Feel free to check that out because guys, it's such a big help to know exactly how the interviewers are going to be scoring. Now there are four different types of questions that you could be asked on your own MMI interview day. But the very first one that we're going to talk about are the ethical decision making style of questions. So I'm going to go ahead and link some MMI practice questions in the description below. But just for example right now, we're going to choose one and it's that you are in a healthcare setting and there is a 14 year old girl who approaches you and asks for birth control medication but she does not want you to go and tell her parents. Now these questions are going to be ones that aren't very easily answered. There's going to be arguments in favor of this side or that side, but it's going to be your job to kind of discuss all of the things that pertain to this question and then finally reach some sort of conclusion. Now my three tips in order to answer these questions properly, the very first one that I would suggest in this case is to begin your conversation with a summary of the ethical scenario that you've been uh, presented. So basically when you go and first start interacting with the interviewer, you would basically start off in providing uh, a summary of what we're talking about here. Once you've given a summary of the actual statement that you're going to be talking about, you are now going to identify some pros and some cons of taking a particular action towards reaching a decision. Now, in this case, one argument in favor of giving this 14-year-old girl birth control medication is that you could say that the patient has made a very responsible decision in coming to see you today and asking for the birth control medication because she is taking preventative action to prevent unwanted pregnancy, which is a negative health outcome for her in this case. However, on the other side, we could then go ahead and get into some reasons why you might not want to go and give the patient the medication. One of which being that there might be an educational gap in what the patient thinks the medication will do versus what it actually does. Because it's commonly known that birth control medication does not prevent against STDs or STIs and therefore uh, it might not be doing what the patient thinks it should be doing. So first I might want to go ahead and educate her or at least have a little bit more of a conversation regarding what she wants the medication for. Now there's going to be uh, more pros and more cons for this particular question right here and you could go ahead and use them to support your answer. But my tip for this is to make sure that at this point in addressing the question, we are simply uh, uh, addressing, we are showing the interviewer that we are able to look at this question from multiple angles and not just follow down one path. We kind of lay everything out first, making sure that they know that we understand the different implications of taking a particular action. And then after then, we could bring everything together to reach the final answer. 
And my final tip for these ethical slash decision-making types of problems is that once we finally identified the pros and cons, we need to pick an actual answer, a very concrete answer. You don't want to leave it as something up in the open because it shows that you're not decisive enough to come to an actual conclusion. Now, it doesn't have to be a yes or a no. You could introduce uh, something else that you might do in this case. Like you could say that I would go ahead and first sit and have a conversation with the patient, make sure that she understands all of the risks, and then I'd ask her some more about why she didn't want me to tell her or her parents, and then I'd go ahead uh, and make a decision after that. I would probably go ahead and prescribe her the medication. That could be your answer, but make sure that you actually reach some sort of conclusion and you don't just leave it all swirling around as hypotheticals. Now, the second type of question that you could get on your MMI is an acting station. In these types of questions, what you'll have to do is go into a room or a situation, they're going to have an actor in there, and instead of answering a question, you'll actually have to act out the scenario and kind of see how it plays out. So one of the common ones that they use as examples online is that you uh, and your business colleague are going on a business trip and you have to board a plane in order to fly to the destination. However, you get there and your business uh, partner or your colleague uh, is scared of planes and they won't board the plane. So basically, you have to now go into the situation and kind of act out with them and show what you would do in order to uh, advance the situation. Now my first tip for these types of scenarios here is that you're always going to want to start off the interaction with some form of introduction. Introduce yourself, say your name, get their name, and then once you have their name, use their name. People like to be referred to as their name and it shows some degree of you actually being present and involved in whatever situation you're given. My second tip when it comes to these types of questions here is to always go ahead and focus on the communication aspect when you're interacting with the actor. So basically, don't go in with a narrow-minded strategy and kind of stick to it no matter what the feedback is from the actor. Instead, what you should be focusing on is asking open-ended questions and making sure that you listen very well to what the actor has to say. Furthermore, you also want to go ahead and clarify with the actor that you've uh, been able to find the common complaint here and then work together with them, suggest maybe a few different alternatives as to ways that you could go ahead and work through the problem together. Finally, my last tip when it comes to these actor types of questions here is that you do not want to get frustrated. No matter what is going on in the situation, no matter how abrasive the actor might be or how rude in some cases, you never want to go ahead and lose your cool. Always try and remain empathetic and try and help them to the best of your ability, even if the situation's not going well. Now, the third type of question that you could see on your MMI, the third type of station, is the collaboration or debate stations, where basically it'll be you and another applicant that have to go into a situation together and you, you'll be given a common task, something that you two need to do together. Now these could take the forms of debates, like um, talking about the healthcare system, someone give pros, someone give cons. Another thing they could ask you to do is draw a picture, where one person will have the picture in front of them, and then you sit back to back with someone else, and the other person will have to draw it. So we'll have one person communicating the picture to the other person, and they'll have to draw it out. But regardless of the situation that you're going to be presented with with another applicant, these three tips are going to be the exact same. The first tip is to never intentionally sabotage the other person in the interview station with you. The purpose of the situation is to try and work together with the other person towards a common goal and to focus on the communication aspect. But it's, going, it's not going to work well in your favor if the interviewer could tell that you're purposely trying to make the other interviewee look bad. The second tip for these types of questions here, for these types of stations, is to not get focused on the end result. It's never going to be about who wins the debate, or who's able to put together the puzzle or draw the picture in the shortest amount of time. Instead, what you should be focusing on is your ability to communicate with the other person. So focus on that communication aspect. Be sure to state your points properly, and then ask for clarification if when someone else gives a point or when someone else gives you a direction, you can't understand what it is that they're saying. Finally, my last tip for these types of collaboration stations is to never assume that the other person knows what it is that you're talking about. Always go ahead and provide explanations about puzzle pieces or giving your points in a debate in a very concise and basic manner, but then also always go ahead and check with the other person that you're collaborating with to make sure that they understood what it is that you said. And if you didn't uh, get your point across properly, you could always go ahead to rephrase it in order for them to understand what it is that you're saying. 
The end goal for these collaboration stations is that it's not about who's able to put together the puzzle the fastest or draw the picture or win the debate. What it is about though is focusing on the communication, making sure that the other person is able to understand you and that you could understand them and that the two of you work well together. And now the fourth and final different station that you could have on your MMI interview are going to be the personal reflection types of questions. Now it's at these stations here where you're going to start to see questions like, uh, why do you want to be a doctor? Or uh, can you describe one time where you experienced adversity? Or what does the definition of uh, struggle mean to you? And you're going to have to go ahead and use your own uh, experiences that you've been through in order to best answer the question. Now my first tip for these types of questions here is that the conversation that you have with the interviewer should primarily feel genuine. That is the point of this conversation. You want to go ahead and have like a discussion between two people about the experiences that you've been through because you are the expert on this topic. Only you know what you've been able to make it through to overcome in order to get in this position here. And now it's up to you to share that with the interviewer. The second tip that I would have for answering these types of questions here is to use specific examples from your life of times where you're trying to uh, show this point or that point there. What you don't want to do is talk about yourself as a hypothetical. You've actually lived through many experiences in your own life and now is the time to pick specific examples to show the people asking you the questions why it is that you know what you're talking about. And finally, my third tip is that once you've chosen specific examples and you've told them to the interviewer, always go ahead and follow that up with what you've learned from this particular thing that happened to you in your life. It's not enough just to state an instance that's happened to you, but rather you should take that now, pick out things that you've remembered from that experience that have changed who you are and made you a better person because of it, and now how you could take those things and apply them to your future career as a doctor. All right guys, and that's it for everything that I wanted to tell you in terms of the highest yield information that I could share with you before your MMI interview day, okay? Just make sure that before your actual interview, in this little bit of time now, you are practicing going over all of the different practice questions that you could do, you're practicing with friends or other people that are going for interviews, and then even if you want to set up a camera and go ahead and record yourself so that you could see what you sound like when you give your actual answers. And that's it, so best of luck on everyone's interview. If you go ahead and get into the school that you were trying to get into, please feel free to let me know. I'd love to hear it. I'm super happy for you guys for actually getting an interview, okay? Um, and we'll see you all in the next video. So everyone just take it easy, and we'll see you later.